we know that a lot of central banks and sovereign wealth funds, like for monarchies, are reducing their treasury bond holdings. And the natural question that guys like me ask, that doesn't get asked in the Wall Street financial circles, what are they buying after they sell their treasury? They're buying gold. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. Hope you're doing well out there and ready for part two of the interview that I did recently with Dr. Jim Willie, editor of the Hat Trick Letter at golden-jackass.com. In part one, he talked a lot about what's going on in the treasury market, the dynamics that are at play there. And in this second part, we're going to dig more into gold and silver. So hope you're ready and here we go. There's a lot going on in international commerce, global commerce. The Suez is going to be shut down. Uh, it's going to mean a lot of lost revenue for Egypt, and it's going to bring, mean step by step the end of the king dollar as the global currency reserve. We're going to see gold move in. And it's happening right now under our noses. It's not in the financial press of the West because they're not permitted to talk about that. But country after country, okay, we, we know, Chris, that they're selling a lot of treasury bonds. We know that a lot of central banks and sovereign wealth funds, like for monarchies, are reducing their treasury bond holdings. And the natural question that guys like me ask that doesn't get asked in the Wall Street financial circles, what are they buying after they sell their treasury? They're buying gold because what they're buying will be the next basis and foundation of the monetary system. They're selling treasuries and buying gold. Only half that story is being told in the press. It's not good press, not responsible press. And I'm grateful for their irresponsible press because it means demand for a newsletter that's legitimate. Well, unfortunately, we have you in there covering that with the hat trick, yeah. Letter, which uh, yeah. link to that in the description field below. Jim, another thing that we've heard about in the past couple of years from some analysts, also from some very central bankers, is the possibility of marking up the gold revaluation accounts. And I know you follow Luke Roman and listen to some of his research. He had an interesting uh note that he mentioned in one of his interviews where he thinks that's how the treasury will ultimately be forced to get out of this situation and placing a call to the federal reserve and having a revaluation there do you think we will see some sort of outcome like that yeah i do uh that has a prerequisite you didn't mention it the central banks can get out of jail, get out of insolvency, but, but they've got to buy not truckloads. They've got to buy boatloads of gold bullion. They can't just revalue gold and, and, and have a, a, a big benefit. They must be holding what they revalue. It was about August and September, I came out with a reminder of what Zealstra, it's Z-I-J-L-S-T-R-A, Zilstra. He was the chairman of Basel, the chairman of the Bank for International Settlements. He was a Dutch banker who was elevated to the chairman of Basel, B-I-S. And he was done with his career around 91. He had a quote. He said this to Volcker, if 250 million in redemption uh, of, of U.S. government debt to gold, if that causes the problem, then you're dead already or something along those lines. His name was Zilstra, and he said after he retired, this is the mid-90s, he said the central banks, he's referring to the Rothschild franchise system of central banks, if the central banks continue on the path that they we're on, they're going to eventually be holding a tremendous amount of sovereign debt and toward the end of the game the symptom of the end of the game is rising interest rates where they have difficulty selling the bonds so they have to raise the interest rate the bond yields in order to sell them 
That's where we are now. Why were they raising interest rates? Well, because of price inflation. You know, they say that they're raising rates to combat price inflation, and it's a big fat lie. They're raising rates to prevent a treasury bond default and nobody showing up at the auction, auction failures. Zylstra said that the central banks will find themselves backed into a corner holding a lot of insolvent, I'm sorry, holding a lot of underwater bonds, rendering themselves insolvent. And what they will have to do is quietly accumulate a lot of gold, quietly accumulate. So they can't talk about it. They can't tell you that the Italian, French, British, Japanese, American, Chinese, they're all, they're all buying tremendous amount of gold. They're not going to tell you that. They'll let the word out that their official holdings are increasing, but they don't talk about their sovereign wealth funds like SAFE in China. I believe the Fed has got double books. They got another book that shows their gold holdings and they're buying a lot. And they withhold the supply to dealers and they shut down their bank accounts and they make life difficult for little people like us to buy gold and silver because there's not a lot of supply. And the reason is the big banks are buying them. Okay, Zylstra said that when they get themselves stuck into a corner of insolvency, holding a tremendous amount of, of underwater damaged bonds, they will accumulate gold and lift it to five and then 10,000 per ounce and realize the benefit. Okay, this has precedent. I think it was Franklin Roosevelt who confiscated gold at, at something like $25 an ounce and then they revalued at 37 and it helped the banks. I know it sounds like small numbers, but add some zeros to that. Imagine, you know, buying at 250 and selling I mean, raising up to three, three, 370. Imagine at 2,500 and raising to 3,700. It's the ratios that matter. I think the big banks, the central banks, are all buying gold. Remember, the Basel III rules made gold a tier one asset, and we haven't seen any indication of a follow-on effect in the news of something based in an event. We've seen no events that exercise the Basel tier one gold status, none, zero. Does that mean they're not doing anything? No, it means they're not telling us that they're doing anything. I think they're already now in a middle stage toward the revaluation of the gold price and the stage they're in is heavy volume accumulation. So yeah, Zilstra got it right. And he was a bit of a maverick. He was not a typical Swiss banker. He was Dutch. He was a, their finance minister and became Basel's chairman. I think it was a, a Basel officer and then later a chairman. I don't know the exact sequence. But Chris, we got indications all over the place. We're, we're going to see something maybe like a stress factor of primary bond dealers. Maybe a minor bank in the list of primary bond dealers will go bust. They're under contract to buy whatever is not sold at an auction, the treasury bond auction. Wouldn't it be interesting if three primary bond dealers go bust and they lie about it and say they're exiting their role from primary bond dealer? I don't expect any of them to tell the truth. We have to interpret what's happening. This is, this is very dicey very dangerous and nerve wracking. We're enduring a transition from the dollar global reserve foundation to gold. We are enduring it. And I told people a long time ago, in that end state, there'll be endless war. One war, then another war, then another war. Okay, we're getting close to the end of Ukraine. Now we got a new war. I don't even like talking about war. <clears throat> Well, Jim, in the meantime, all that's happening, something that we touched on several times last year, where again, back in August, there was a lot of speculation that the BRICS were going to come out with some sort of gold-backed trading mechanism. 
didn't have any formal announcement. There seems to be from time to time indications that still working on something. I'm curious if you've heard anything else about what might be going on with that. And of course, if so, how that fits in, which obviously would seem to be just another uh, leg of pressure on the whole situation. I said in July and early August that the Johannesburg, it's also known as Joburg, the Joburg, I love that, in slang terms in the black market, it's called Joburg. In the Johannesburg BRICS meeting, I previewed and said, I don't think they're going to launch the gold token. I don't think it's time is right. And my client said, why not? It'd be perfect time. And I said, because we're not in the grips of a treasury bond default. And now we're getting there. So expect it to come soon. Expect a big news item about treasury bond crisis, not default, crisis, symptoms of default. They'll admit symptoms. They won't admit default. <clears throat> They'll admit repo window problems. They'll admit Long Beach problems. They won't admit default. We're going to see evidence of a treasury bond crisis and default, and there'll be more announced progress of the gold token. Russia announced a digital ruble a couple months ago, and China announced and has been using, and has been using a digital yuan currency. Got to remember something about the BRICS. They can work in the slow lane and still work very effectively. They can announce eventually the BRICS gold token and, and have a delay and another delay. What happens during the delay? More evidence of treasury bond default, more activity of gigantic unfunded deficits. Time is on the side of the BRICS. Now, another feature of the BRICS, and, and they openly state this, Chris, <clears throat> they say, we are all about multiple alternatives to the dollar. Okay? They say, we are about de-dollarization, but they don't say it must be this. Instead, they say it could be this, 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 or this. We don't care. It could be the Chinese yuan for Persian Gulf oil sales. It could be the UAE Durham, Dirham, Dirham uh, for usage for countries that want something gold, I'm sorry, dollar pegged. It could be rupee for Russian sale of oil to India. Uh, it could be the yuan for Iran. And it, now they've announced that they've got the, let's just say, the connecting cables are making more progress for BRICS nations and using XRP. So think of it as a palette. Okay, we're this is your de-dollarization palette. You got the ruble, you got the yuan, you got XRP, and you might have a couple of others over time. That's your palette of de-dollarization options. Okay. I think XRP is going to be, they, they just announced in the BRICS that they're going to use it as a transition bridge currency. Not in heavy volume. And I think, and as they, as they use it, we might see the XRP coin go up in value. I've been saying for a long time, I expect it to go up in value, and then they're going to increase the market cap, and that will allow them to square their market cap. Increase their number of coins, increase their market cap, and square their total. Okay. It's going to be one country after another that uses XRP. Now, I did a consult call. It was somewhere around May, I think. It was a guy from uh, Qatar. And he, he said, Jim, I'm an Arab. And you, you see my Arab name. And his English was perfect. And he said, I want you to know that I spend a lot of time in Saudi with my business. 
Um, he was involved, let's just say he's involved in the support equipment for the oil and gas industry. He was not an oil pumper. He was not a gas pumper. He was in the equipment. He said, I spent a lot of time in Saudi and I spent a lot of time in Bahrain. And, you know, we don't pronounce it right. It's Bahrain, Bahrain, Bah, Bahrain. Okay. He said, Bahrain is really interesting because they allow liquor and bars. They allow dancing and discotheques. They allow bikinis on the beach. And they got some ladies who take it all off in certain strip clubs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gentlemen clubs. Yeah, they're, they're gentlemen. I forgot. Um, he said, they're using XRP all across the Persian Gulf. And I said, tell me where. He said, you see it on cell phone bills. You see it on water bills. You see it on electricity bills. I said, okay, so the utilities. He said, yes. That was the initial introduction. He said, it's several monarchies in the Gulf. And I said, how about for contract and business? He said, yes, that has begun a few months ago. I said, tell me if this is a typical kind of example. There's a construction site. There's a lot of different construction suppliers and the cement supplier bills like hundreds of thousands of dollars in XRP. He said, yes, they've begun to do that. Individual contractors are billing with XRP payment in XRP. I said, okay, so this is a trial. And I said, and UAE is behind this. They're the ringleader. They're the manager. They're the, the band leader. They're in charge of setting it up, trying it out, requesting it, researching it. He said, yes. I said, I heard they spent $230 million setting up the digital architecture for the Gulf payment system. He said, yes, that's true. UAE is the leader. And I said, well, wouldn't it be interesting if France announces that they're going to be buying UAE oil or gas or LNG and a quarter of the contract will be paid in XRP? He said, Jim, I really think that might happen. I, I, I agree with you on that. All right. He was a very helpful guy. He was a very smart guy and he had good English. And uh, I asked him, what are your what is your big fear? And he said, oh, we often have the same fear. Of, of foreign militaries, and the other fear is shortage of water. Okay, there were desert kingdoms. We're concerned about foreign militaries. And I said, well, golly, if, if China is a guarantor of smooth sailing for UAE as they abandon the dollar and adopt gold and adopt XRP, the Chinese military is in the UAE. And he said, yes. It's an unfortunate reality. And harken back 20 years, and you had the Iraq, let's just say, military engagement with the United States following Kuwait years before. And the, the Saudis violated their own religious laws and allowed the U.S to participate in the Sultan Air Base. The United States military tarnished their religious purity of the Sultan Air Base in Saudi Arabia. Okay, now the Chinese are there. Okay, the Chinese are gonna be protecting UAE. For those who don't know, UAE is a very small population and very wealthy from energy proceeds and savings. Saudi is a heavily populated nation, kingdom, with a tremendous amount of wealth. And in both monarchies, the royals hog the wealth. I heard that UAE, about six, eight years ago, they moved out of a trillion dollar sovereign wealth fund stole it and put it in a London bank. Okay, so these monarchies are not always operating in the best interest of their citizens or their, I guess when it's a kingdom, it's called their subjects. <clears throat> I love these terminologies. What, what am I? Am I a subject or am I a citizen or am I just a plebeian, a pawn? Okay, the only way to get your freedom 
from that classification is by owning gold and silver. And for speak- those who, for those who don't know, by the way, the dollar is not money, so it's going to get downgraded. The dollar is the backside of a bond coupon. Going to get downgraded. <clears throat> Speaking of, you mentioned our favorite word here, silver. Curious, uh, any updated thoughts? I know last time we talked, you wondered if we would have a day where the COMEX just forgot to turn the lights on or something else quirky happening. Obviously, we're getting numbers showing that we're running a silver deficit, not seeing a lot of new projects go online because the price is sitting where it is. So, uh, curious if you have anything that you're seeing and would like to share on the silver side. Well, it's not so much silver as it is precious metals, and it's the LBMA. Uh, the, the Chinese have backed out of the LBMA. Uh, Ten Chinese banks exited London uh, for LBMA and London Metal Exchange. Um, it's not the same thing I've come to learn. I learn something once in a while. I, I make some assumptions and they're not correct. And I just hope they're not really serious errors. But the Chinese have exited the LBMA. Ten banks are no longer part of the LBMA. And it wasn't about more than about a month that London announced that all of their gold contracts will be denominated in Chinese yuan. Let that sink in the London gold futures contracts will no longer be in dollar. Let that sink in. What that means is the differential between the COMEX gold price and the Shanghai gold price is worth watching. What I've noticed now, Chris, is that a couple months ago, we had $115 higher Shanghai gold price than COMEX. I call it the gold delta. The delta for Shanghai was 115. Then it came down. They, they knocked down the Shanghai price. Then it went right back up to 70, 80, 90 for the delta. Shanghai being higher than COMEX gold price. Now what you're seeing is Shanghai is lifting it up because Shanghai is not associated with London. Shanghai is lifting up the gold price. Let me put this in a different form with an elevated emphasis. China's determining the gold price. China has captured control of the gold price. China is running the gold market and silver will be attached at the hip. That's why we saw 2150, 2160 for the gold price recently. Of course, they're going to knock it down. But let me make a just a kind of a this is a hunch, okay? This is my intuition talking. The people who are knocking it down are the people doing the naked short selling, but also the people who have weak knees. They don't believe the 2150 is going to hold. They're waiting to see how far down does it come. Well, if it doesn't come down a lot, they're going to be buying back again. So the same people who drove it up to 2150 are going to drive it up to 2200. And then they're going to knock it down again. It's not going to come down a lot because London is not in the gold market of London. Did I say I meant I meant Shanghai? Shanghai is not part of the London gold market. Shanghai is going to be running the gold price. Wave after wave after wave. Of course, there'll be sell down. So what? Eventually, we're going to see the COMEX shut down. They don't have any gold. They're not setting the price. So what are they doing open? If they're not going to be making any money by selling futures, then maybe they don't have enough money to pay the electric bill. Maybe they won't have enough money to pay their rent. And maybe they'll shut down. And my joke is maybe they'll have big backup in the men's room and there'll be fecal matter all over the trading floor. So they'll have to shut down for health reasons. Health reasons is a really big reason in the last few. The health factor is a really good reason in the last three years for shutting things down. Maybe the comics will be a victim of health shutdown. I don't know. I don't care. But I expect that they're going to have lawsuits. They're, they're doing too many forced cash settlements. Um, 
I expect the comics to shut down. I'm really anxious to see what will be their justification. But it is so important. And my colleagues have said, Jim, Shanghai has taken control of the gold pricing mechanisms. They're going to take control of the oil price mechanisms and the industrial metal mechanisms and coal and maybe lumber and maybe agriculture. We might be seeing a shift now from COMEX in London to Shanghai for the commodity markets. And that is where the BRICS come in. Shanghai is going to be the market for the BRICS nations. This is going to get really big, really, really big. The BRICS are not done. They're, they just retreated. It's a strategic retreat. They're continuing with their connectivity with uh, cryptos, with you know digital currencies and with XRP. Uh, the number of Ripple Tech XRP contracts is growing rapidly. There's some doubt that, that you know, I, I read once in a while, XRP is one of the biggest frauds. Oh, really? Who wrote that? A Wall Street Journal editor? Who wrote that? A Wall Street bank economist? Who wrote that? You got to see who writes these things. You got to see where they appear. If it's in the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, I wouldn't put a whole lot of faith in it. Okay. The BRICS have time on their side. By pausing, they allow more recognition of the Treasury bond default. The Treasury bond default will trigger the biggest, most monstrous gold bull market in history. It's trillions that are going to be chasing gold. It's all the trillions that are locked up in the Treasury bonds. And the funny part is that the U.S. is going to either join this or enter the third world. We might see Texas apply for BRICS membership. I believe there's a lot more sovereignty for the individual 50 states than we're aware of. Watch Texas apply for BRICS membership. Watch their economy thrive if it happens. And then watch 12 other states, there's 13 in all, that are considering BRICS membership. And then you get into legal wrangling. Do they have the constitutional ability? The answer is yes because state rights prevail over federal. It's a very important point. A lot of things happening, a lot of moving parts. Um, I'm excited. I'm as excited, Chris, as I am worried. Um, and that's, you know, the Chinese say that opportunity, no, risk and opportunity, risk and danger, same symbol. Yeah, well, here we are. Um, don't be too concerned about higher premiums to pay for silver. The premium indicates the true price. The fraud is when you sell it. You don't get your premium back. You sell at the corrupt low price. Don't be hesitant at all to pay up on premium. Get what you can because soon you're not going to find any silver. Well, certainly is setting up to be an eventful year and Jim, appreciate everything you shared here and great to check in with you, get a primer for what to be on the watch out for in 2024. And perhaps uh, as we wrap up, you could just mention how people can stay up to date. Obviously, you're tracking a lot of information and trends that are going on and can let people know where they can find you and a little bit more about the hat trick letter. It's called the hat trick letter, but the name is really arbitrary. It is the, yeah. It's the newsletter for the website golden-jackass.com. There's a hyphen in there. It may not be may not be evident, but golden-jackass as of uh, I think 2020 January. Uh, the December report was posted um, not quite a week ago. It was posted on I believe on on Saturday, uh, Saturday the 30th. I always like to post in the same month. You know, it's kind of funny, but I think it was June where I, no, May. May, I posted on the 2nd of June, so I called it I called it May 33rd. Um, the May report was posted on May 33rd. 
you know, we have a little fun, but this, these are very dangerous times and sometimes there are little hitches, but uh, the golden hyphen jackass website has been very popular in the last two years. And I'm really happy and really content for the support. I'm very grateful for it. Um, I'm grateful for the sponsors. Uh, I, I now have the ability to tell that the donate button no longer has a PP uh, involvement. I don't like mentioning their name, but PP is not part of the donate button. So go ahead, hit the donate button, support my work, and you will not be stepping in the room with PP or all their corrupt bullshit for imposing fines for not conforming to their version of the truth. Uh, you know, I've got an attitude toward PP. It's very clear. And um, they're not in the room anymore. All right. The flagship product is the newsletter. Subscribe is yellow in the right in the center. I got a couple uh, orders la last night today. I got a couple of consult orders last night and today. They keep me very busy. I really have almost no time off. Um, I'm at this every day. I've been at this desk every day for seven consecutive years. We're talking about 2,500 consecutive days. So I'm dedicated. Uh, I have not had a great opportunity to work on my tan. Um, you indicated that I might have tan in, in certain body parts, but that's not the case. Um, <clears throat> the consulting keeps me busy. The sponsor puts me on my knees for gratitude to the Lord. Um, I can honestly say that I've had my hind parts rescued by Christians more than a few times. Uh, I'm a Christian. My crucifix is back there, and so is St. Michael, the archangel. That's the bluish one, low. Um, it's all very inspirational. I've got probably six or eight sponsors who are Christians. They're very good, fine people, and fortunately, they have the wealth to assist me now and again during a tough spot. I've had a lot of tough spots. Uh, as my one colleague said, Jimmy, you're directly over the target. It's no wonder you're getting shot at. I don't like getting shot at. Um, I've not been mortally wounded, but I've been seriously wounded. Um, I keep going. The newsletter is a work, it, what do you call it, a labor of love. Uh, they're hard to start, and it's, but they're difficult for me to walk away from after I've done a day of work. They're hard to start. Oh my gosh, where do I start? What's the first, uh, what do I do? I don't even have an outline. What? What's the first story? Well, what, what's the chapter that I find most interesting? And then I start with that. And then I do an outline. I get to a second chapter. And before you know it, I, I'm, I'm working off and on until nine at night. Um, but I go to bed early and I get up early. I get up with the sun. I get up at 5.30. And that's just the way it is. I get up. It's not birds that wake me up. It's the light that wakes me up and delivery trucks. <laughs> well, good, good to hear you're getting your circadian rhythms back in line there. And yes, I was just reading through the latest issue of the Hat Trick Letter this morning and a lot of great information in there as always. So link to golden hyphen jackass is in the description field below. And please do visit the site and check out what Jim has there. And Jim, just uh, want to thank you again for joining me today. Great to have you on as we kick off 2024. Does does seem like we're in line for an eventful year, I suppose. The time between big events is quickening. It's continuing to quicken. Continuing to quicken. Accelerating I, I meant, to quickening. I mentioned six months ago that the, the time between important events was quickening. And it's continuing to quicken. We're getting a big news item every seven to 10 days. The Suez Canal is not going to go away. It's going to bring about the end of the dollar as the global reserve. Remember that. Great to have you have me on. Great, great, great for you to see me again. No. <laughs>
it's great to see you again. You're extraordinarily handsome. I, I love looking at you. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> it's a pleasure as always, Tim. And I'm so full of crap. Now we had your laugh going in slow motion there for a second, which is perhaps the perfect way to end it. <laughs> Thanks for making some time. Go check out Golden Hyphen Jackass. And Jim, we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon, my friend. Yeah. All right. Keep in touch, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's always good. It's always fun. We always come at it from a different angle. Uh, it's the same problem, different day, different angle. All right. Thanks for having me on. Keep All in right. touch. Bye Thanks, now. Sir. Stay safe. And there you have it from the great Dr. Jim Willie. Always entertaining and informative as Jim certainly covers a lot of information, keeps track of a lot of the things that are going on and always fun to listen to. So do hope you enjoyed that one. And before we wrap up, did want to let you know that Miles Franklin is running a special this week on Trump one ounce wanted for president silver bars for only 315 over spot, as well as Noah's Ark one ounce silver coins for 349 over spot. So if you'd like to take advantage of that or have questions about anything that's going on in the gold and silver markets, well, you can just email Arcadia at Miles Franklin. Happy to get back to you with information about that or if you'd like to place an order. And with that said, gonna wrap up for today. Hope you're having a great day out there and we'll see you again soon. There's a lot going on.